Hello, welcome to NASA's Johnson Space Center. I'm an intern here, I'm with the USRA program, and I'll link a lot of the program information below if you're interested. But I wanted to show the internet what it's like to really be an intern, at least at JSC. Now today, we're gonna have a really awesome tour of the Saturn V rocket here at Rocket Park. So let's go ahead and take a closer look. What you see here, this rather rusted part, this is where the men would sit during the launches uh, up to the moon. So this is called the Apollo capsule. And then the rest, all the way down, is just rocket and a little bit of payload or packaging. So let's go ahead and get into it. Now, the Apollo program was started in the 1960s and went through the 1970s. It sent men into space. If you're not an intern or affiliated with NASA, you can still come to Rocket Park as it is open and free to the public every day. But as an intern, what we do is we come here quite frequently to take pictures, to show our family, and to just hang out sometimes. But the best thing about coming to Rocket Park is because is it shows you the full scope of what we do at NASA. Now, we don't actually work on rockets. We don't test rockets. But all of NASA will do that. And so we get to see the different parts of other centers that come together and they make up the entirety that you see right before us. So as we saw at the head, we saw the Apollo capsule. Now that's where the crew stayed, so that's the kind of stuff that JSC would actually work on, is the, the chamber and uh, how the launch would impact the astronauts themselves. And the rest of this would be spread out through different sites like Stennis and Marshall, and uh, of course the launch at Kennedy. But as you can see, it is so expansive that NASA really does need so many different sites. We have not just uh, space and testing sites, but we also have many research centers. In fact, Langley was the first uh, NASA center back before it was called NASA. Now, can anybody tell me what it was called before then? If so, Put it in the comments below. Now, although NASA and America do not put the first man into space, thank you to the Russians, they were the first to put man on the moon, which I'm sure we all know in 1969. But can anybody tell me who the three astronauts were? We'll find out in a minute, right before we get to the most, at least in my opinion, the most impressive section of the whole rocket. Back here at the tail end, we have the engines and boosters. Incredible size. I mean, can you just imagine standing right next to one of these things as it's going up? You're not even allowed, obviously you're not allowed to because you get your face blown off. But now, we can do that. Stand right here and just imagine this full scope. Awesome! Now today, we have in storage all 14 plus two extras of the engine boosters from the shuttle program, which we'll be using on the space launch system to put us into deep space and Mars. All right, but let's take a rewind back and let's go ahead and learn a little bit more about the Apollo program. So still in Rocket Park, we have our contribution to all the astronauts that participated. Unfortunately, we did lose our first three astronauts at the very beginning of the program. Now, as an intern who was you know, born far after the Apollo program had even finished, I still feel connected to the loss of these three men. 
these three men were pioneers who knew that they could die. They knew going into it that this was not 100% safe. This was not like hanging out at your home in a safe little bubble. This could kill them. They knew that going into it, and yet they went to provide us with the amazing American space program that we have today, with all the amazing type of technologies that we have gotten from this. And we'll head down to see a couple of the other amazing astronauts that participated in our wonderful space program through the years. So here, this is the Apollo 8. This took humans to the moon, although they did not get out and jump around. They were still orbiting the moon. They were the first Americans to do so. However, it took us a few more tries to actually get boots on the ground. And here we are, the famous Apollo 11 crew. Now, I'm sure you all know we have Armstrong, Aldrin, and one more, Collins. So as an intern, I have been very, very fortunate to have actually met Buzz Aldrin. He came out for a book signing, and I got to meet him, shake his hand, ask him a question, and get an autograph. All right, let's go down. I want to show you one more before we head out for the day. Just as impactful as Apollo 1 and Apollo 11 to me is Apollo 13. Now I'm sure you all have uh, seen the movie Apollo 13 and the crisis that took place. But as an intern, we get to see an inside scoop of this. I have met with engineers that worked on that crisis program. I have met with the flight director who was in charge during those first crucial hours of the crisis. It is a very, very touching and motivating story because we were able to have this terrible thing happen and yet work on it, bring it back together, bring our men home safely. Now, I'm sure you guys remember that Commander Lowell, but do you know how he got his home? Just as the movie shows, it was a space sextant that used to get home. Now this is something that a lot of um, navigators would use before technology on the high seas. Now today, we are still using this technology to get us to Mars in case we have another crisis happen. All right, let's go ahead and go down to the very end and we'll finish up with the interesting fun facts of how Apollo 15 and 16 were very interesting because they were able to bring back the most amount of moon rocks that we have today. All right, well, I hope you guys have enjoyed this first installment of what it's like to be an intern at JSC, and I hope that you'll continue my story through the rest of the summer. Thank you all.